Sup guys, it's Pax Perry. I hope you've been well. So today, I see a lot of people that are struggling, they're tired of their workout program, or they haven't ever stepped in the gym before. And as a personal trainer, as someone who researches, someone who um, has gone through so many different phases of just how do I get strong? How do I um, build an aesthetic physique? So there's a whole lot to talk about here. There's a lot that goes into it, but hopefully I'm going to simplify this for you to the best of my knowledge because this is so important. Like this means life or death in my opinion and in my experience. Um, I think that training and good nutrition, sound nutrition, supplementation, the right supplements though, and if needed, the correct approach on drugs, because everyone thinks that, oh, it's all about the steroids, um, that's what gets you gains. That's not, that's not true. So I'm gonna tell you what really matters on building an aesthetic physique, a strong physique, and a physique, a body that will function, that will make you feel good. Because that's what everyone wants, right? You want to feel good. You don't want to feel like trash. Um, if you're watching this video and you are a complete beginner and you have no idea what you're doing in the gym and you are tired of people scamming you, you're tired of watching YouTube videos of just <laughs> the, the mind-blowing amounts of scammers and bullshit that's online, then this is the video for you. Why would you want to get strong? Okay, so strength is a reflection of how jacked you are. Now, I thought it was the other way around. I thought it was just abs. Don't get me wrong, I like doing abs uh, every day because that's how, that's just what I like doing. Um, I'm not saying that you should do that, but training for strength, specifically five by five, or some type of powerlifting principles within your training, that is going to produce the most jacked and healthy and capable physique. So you're not going to build muscle if you're just doing machines all the time, unless you have like a medical condition or you're overweight, that's totally fine. I don't judge anyone. I would stay away from just training with machines because that's not going to get you the results that you want. Um, the machines are there as like a supplement and supplements are there to supplement what the basics don't have, if that makes sense. So we wanna always start with a power rack and a barbell. So a lot of, there's so much debate about this and there's, there's, there's a ridiculous amount of debate about um, this whole thing. But from my experience and um, everything that I've gathered like in my entire 17 years, 16 and a half uh, years of just researching, um, I think that training for strength is the best approach. Now, you're going to have to learn how to do the movements properly, like the squat, the bench press, the deadlifts, the overhead press. Um, you will have to learn how to do that correctly because you will get injured if you don't. So there is a right way to do that. Um, and typically it means full range of motion. Now, I'm not talking about the people that already have injuries. 
there is a way around that to build up to these basics, to build up to being able to squat. Um, there is multiple ways around that, and if you want me to make a video on how to squat if you're injured, um, then just let me know in the comments. I would be happy to write some type of mobility program or something that will get you eventually to be able to squat. This is off of five by five. So you're gonna be alternating one and two workouts or AB workouts, if you will. So I wanna see squats on that first workout and we'll go ahead and discuss the volume and stuff uh, a little bit later, but squats, bench press, flat bench press with a barbell, squats with a barbell, um, and rows. That's gonna be the minimum for the first workout. So if you can, if you're like more advanced or you start progressing more, I would add in pull-ups, curls, and skull crushers on that same workout. So that's workout A or workout one. I would do five by five or three sets of five on those main lifts, meaning squat bench and rows. So, and rows with a barbell. So um, that's the first workout. If you can't recover, I would just do those three exercises, the squats, the bench press, and the row. I would keep those in at the bare minimum. So workout two, or workout B, is going to be working up to one set of deadlifts. So deadlifts, deadlifts are taxing. They will, um, and the reason why most people get injured on them is they are either doing them with too much weight, too much volume, or they just don't know how to do the movement properly. So I would work up to one set of deadlifts, probably five, either three or five reps, depending on the day. Um, for novices, I would just do fives, five sets of fives or three sets of five on all these exercises, except the accessory work. So we've got deadlifts in there, overhead press, overhead press standing. Um, that is going to be the best for the shoulders, in my opinion, in my research. Then we're going to do some type of abs work. That's going to be the minimum for workout two, deadlifts, overhead press, and abs. And this is just my view, my opinion. <laughs> so if you can do extra, which I would definitely try to do extra, but I'm leaving these other accessory exercises out for if you are either a novice or you can't recover and you're wanting to do this program every day or you're wanting to do this program more than four days a week. So those other exercises on workout two is gonna be pull-ups, again, close grip bench press or dips if you can. Now, a lot of people have problems with dips and if you have any type of clavicle pain or shoulder pain while you're doing dips, that's probably not the exercise for you. I would just stick with close bench press, close grip bench press. So that's for triceps. And then I would do hip thrusts, alternate hip thrusts with Bulgarian split squats. So one day you do hip thrusts on workout two, the other day you do Bulgarian split squats. So that's gonna be the baseline for building a strong aesthetic physique, in my opinion. Um, I think that that's the best for most people, um, unless you have a medical problem or you are a little bit overweight. Again, I don't judge. That is totally fine. Um, I was overweight when I started. I wasn't like super overweight, but I was a bit chubby when I started lifting. And what I would recommend to those people who can't squat yet, 
I would do it either body weight or I would take the reverse bands, take the bands pulling upwards on the squat rack and have them assist you while you're squatting until you can squat without the bands. Um, it's kind of like Mark Bell's slingshot type of um, technique because uh, it's definitely assisting you but it's not like a smith machine where it's going to um, stop recruiting certain fibers because there's no there's no movement in the other direction so uh, you're definitely want going to want to eventually build up to squatting to depth meaning your hips are below your knees just slightly that's parallel if you can go lower, um, that's great. That means you have really good mobility, but most people don't have the ankle flexion that it takes to be able to squat below parallel. So that's a program that I would do. If I was wanting to get the most amount of results as fast as possible, that's a program I would run. Um, this can, this is obviously for naturals, and if you're enhanced, um, I would do the same thing. That's That doesn't really matter, it just means you can recover faster and you will get results slightly faster depending on the dosage that you're on. So, and that's another topic of creative video. So, comments down below if you want me to talk about the whole mind fuckery of drugs and stuff. I don't recommend it. I'm not advocating it, but I do know quite a bit about it. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you get jacked. I hope that, uh, that was helpful. I hope that, uh, you have a great rest of your day.